Immortals Phoenix Rising is a ton of fun to play. That was one of my biggest takeaways from the two hour play session that I got to do before the Ubisoft Ford event. We should not expect the same depth that we saw in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, the game the same team made of course before this. Although if you played Odyssey, you will notice a lot of familiar systems in this game. The narrative around gods and monsters that of course now turned into Immortals Phoenix Rising was always, hey, this looks like Breath of the Wild with Odyssey elements. And that is really what this game is. It's kind of what we expected. It doesn't make it less fun, but it also leaves more to be desired. In this video, I will share my full impressions, what I really liked, my concerns, and I also will share some new info I learned from an interview with the game director. So a like on the video would really help the channel out, and let's go. As you might know, you can win Immortals Phoenix Rising in my September giveaway for a 2020 game. It's coming out on December 3rd, so if you want to participate, just click the link in the pinned comment. You have to be a subscriber of the channel as well before you enter, and good luck. I was surprised by how fast I picked up the controls of Immortals. Just like Odyssey, we got the light attack button and heavy attack button, a bow we can use to shoot, and also many abilities to choose from via a dedicated ability wheel. But this time, we can of course expect way more magical abilities inspired by the Greek gods. We are in a full Greek mythology world, here and have to help the gods save their home, the Golden Isle, that is being attacked by Typhon, who is free after being imprisoned by Zeus. Gates to the underworld are open, we should expect a lot of mythical creatures on the Golden Isle that we have to take out, and I kinda had to get used to this, where in Odyssey of course these mythical creatures were a one-time thing. In this game you will come across Cerberus or a Minotaur multiple times, like they are just one of the many enemies that you have to fight. The combat feels really good, every hit has impact, enemies react in satisfying ways, but it mostly shines thanks to the different combos you can do and how responsive it all is. Like dashing to targets, doing multiple strikes and then dodging away is totally something you will be doing a lot. The perfect dodge is also present here, so when you pull that off, the time will of course slow down, making enemies an easier target. It's really easy to pick up as they want, you are chaining abilities left and right before you know it. It of course also helps that it's pretty similar to Odyssey, but just with the aerial combat as a layer on top of it. One ability inspired by Ares sends you and the enemies flying, after which you can do some nice aerial combat moves. I soon realized that the heavy attack in the air was actually very strong, thanks to the final hit at the end of the combo, so I tried to use that as often as possible, and also later learned when it was the best time to land the hammer off Hevastos, like really trying the different attacks and combining them together is super satisfying. You also have one attack that lets your bird do these fireballs that interrupt enemies. It was surprisingly strong, but yes, birds. We have a bird following us around this whole game. Like there are just too many familiar elements in Immortals, a new IP. Okay, here I see a night chest on the map, so I'm like, let's check it out. But it's daytime when I get there. And maybe you already can kind of guess what I had to do now. Exactly, meditate, so we go from daytime to nighttime. You would think that they could have thought of any other way to do this, right? The guided arrow is back too, and this felt, weirdly enough, satisfying to send these bolts to the harpies in the air. But I was surprised to find out that many of the puzzles I had to do were also linked to controlling this arrow. They did some very clever things with it for sure. At one point I had to go through handles of weapons and also control the speed of the arrow. Like it makes you think of this mechanic in different ways and use it for things you never thought about before. But on the other hand, I like to see new gameplay ideas in a brand new IP, and Immortal seems to lack that, at least in the demo I played. The narration helps set the game apart though. Throughout the game you will hear Zeus and Prometheus give context to what you are seeing in the world, and what you are currently doing for a main story objective. And listening to it immediately gives away the tone they are going for. I, by the way, have a full non-commentary gameplay video up on the channel as well that I will link to at the end of this one. But this is a small part of it to give you an idea. Chaos reigned, for here monsters roamed free. Can you 
Can you not tell this story like I wasn't just there? Zeus. I was literally just there two weeks ago. And even if I wasn't, though I was, I'd be listening to your story for days. It's called dramatic effect. It's called where's my skip button. So yes, they're totally going for the comedy approach, and I actually dig that. Like, going for a serious tone would not really suit the game well, and we already have enough serious games in the Ubisoft catalog. I did not encounter any NPCs that I could talk to in the world while they should be there, but the focus is on the gods that I think we will be able to meet with, like, every region in the game dedicated to one of them, and I think that this is where the game will shine the most the beautiful worlds that we get to explore. Like really the view that the demo started with was truly breathtaking and this was the world based on the god Hephaestus. So based on metalwork, volcanoes, forges and for the main mission we had to restart those forges by going to four chimneys and find different ways to light them on. So there were small puzzles in order to progress after which I had to take on a boss that was protecting the forge a pretty challenging fight, I already encountered these forge type of creatures earlier, but this one had some new tricks. And then at the end I took it out and I will show you what happens then. Through your help, Phoenix restored power to the forge as Hephaestus' workshop came roaring back to life. Translation, everyone can go home happy. That's why. You are fools to think I was so easily conquered. Come, mortal, and face your real past. Me! Wait, how much more of this story is A lot. So send Hermes out for delivery, because we aren't going anywhere. And this twist was one of the coolest things in my play session. Typhon's rage as a reaction to things you are completing in the world with the huge vortex in the distance and suddenly these tentacles coming out of the ground to attack you. And these type of events should also happen as you clear different points on the map. So in the demo there were already icons indicating where we needed to go, but in the full game it will be less hand to holdy and it really has you explore everything yourself. And the best moments were some of the secrets I found in the world. There will be random puzzles or I could help soldiers who had trouble fighting Cerberus. There was also a tomb I had to dive and then in the end I got to a gear chest with a very powerful helmet that you can then equip and actually with all the enemies you defeat and other activities you do in the world you make Phoenix stronger. I only wasn't able to try the upgrading and crafting myself in the demo because it wasn't available. There will only be two gear slots, so for the helmet and a chest and two weapons. The sword for your light attack button and the axe for your heavy attack. So there will not be any spears or hammers, which is kind of a letdown, it's just not the depth that we see in other Ubisoft games for the same price. But they did promise enough variation and that you actually want to use the different items throughout the whole game because they help during certain activities. Like there should be gear that gives you bonuses while doing a vault for example. And these are like small semi-linear dungeons, a nice change of pace from the open world. And here the game can turn into a platformer as well, where you suddenly have to dodge incoming Cerberus fireballs and other traps. But there will also be puzzles here, like for example move a block and put it on a certain platform so you can access the next area. It was again nothing new, like Phoenix Phoenix just doesn't need a magnet to do the same things as Link in Breath of the Wild. I don't like the stamina system from Breath of the Wild, but it is in this game too. Like we can climb everything, but if your blue meter depletes while you're almost at the top, you will fall down instead. I don't find stuff like that fun. But overall, as I already said, I did enjoy Immortals quite a lot. Like what it's doing, it's doing very well. It was also very polished for a work in progress build with no weird issues or anything. I think it will be cool to explore this full on Greek mythology world and discover the secrets. Like there are special legendary bosses that were pretty challenging to take out and you just come across them while wandering around. It is kind of sad that they were just bigger versions of the familiar enemies I fought before with maybe one new attack. 
but it was still very exciting when I finally beat them. Like, it was a fun challenge for sure. After my play session, I'm totally looking forward to Immortals Phoenix Rising, but I'm not sure if it will lure me away from the other big holiday games like Cyberpunk and Valhalla that seem to have way more depth and things going on. And it's okay that Immortals is not trying to be that, but that will make it a hard sell, I think, if you have limited time and money this holiday, like, let's be honest, almost everyone has. I think it will be a perfect holiday title for the Switch, though, with not a lot of other things going on, and it should be the same version with obviously some technical limitations. But overall, I just feel the deadline that Quebec had delivering this brand new IP in just two years after Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and that was even with a significant delay. If they just had more time, they could add a larger variety of bosses and weapons and just unique elements that this game is just missing right now. I'm just curious to hear what you think, let me know in the comments down below. I got more info and gameplay that I will likely share in the coming days and weeks, so subscribe if you haven't already. A like on the video would really help the channel out, and if you already want to see some raw, no commentary gameplay, you can do that by clicking on the screen. For now though, I will speak to you next time, and goodbye.